Hey, it's Melanie. Just want to check in with everyone. I know it's been a while since I've done an update. And Brad Nelson is here too. Hello. <laughs> He's a meteorologist and a friend of mine, and he was driving for Silver Lining Tours, or guiding rather, doing some forecasting too this past week, or 10 days. And um, we've had a long week this past week. A lot of good days chasing, a lot of chasing for several days in a row, which can be quite draining. So I haven't kept up as much with doing these video, little videos here and there because it's been a lot of driving, chasing, and then trying to get some sleep in between. So I'm on my way back to Minnesota now. It's Friday the 28th, and luckily Brad was finishing up with the tours last yesterday, so he needed a ride back to Minnesota. So there's two of us, which is nice. I hitched a ride. <laughs> Thanks, Mel. But you're driving too, so that's awesome. Um, so I wanted to reflect a little bit about two days ago, May 26th on Wednesday, looked like a really big day for tornadoes. And there were several tornadoes out there, but it didn't turn out to be quite the day that a lot of people were expecting. A lot of people expected to see some big long track tornadoes from storms initiating on the dry line and into the warm sector. And that didn't happen. So it's kind of a good idea to reflect on why and what happened. and think about that day a little bit <laughs> um yeah I had actually I was actually gonna play the warm fronts it's really hard to decide between warm fronts and dry lines some days and the triple point because you can see tornadoes along all those boundaries by the triple point point. and in Minnesota we usually always play the triple point and the warm front because we don't really get dry lines in Minnesota but when you're down south in the plains those dry lines can produce some pretty significant supercells and tornadoes so it's hard to decide, and on this day, I was going to play the warm front up in northern Kansas into southern Nebraska. And then the morning of the day, <laughs> it looked like there was potential for some really big long track tornadoes in central, west central Kansas and the southwestern Kansas, um, initiating on the dry line later in the day. So a lot of chasers, a lot of chasers decided to wait for that dry line to light up, including me. My initial target ended up being the place to be, one of the places to be as far as tornadoes. Uh, but I wasn't there, so I was a little south on the dry line. And a couple of storms started to go up on the dry line and we thought, I thought, this is it, it's gonna go. This is our time, it was only four o'clock, 4.30, plenty of daylight left, and then they just died. So the cap stayed strong down there and never quite broke along the dry line. I did end up heading north, caught up to that warm front before dark, and I got on the tornado warrant supercell right as that storm died, so I missed the tornadoes on it, but, but there was another LP, low precipitation supercell, that was incredibly gorgeous, so I got to watch that as the sun set, and that, that kept tracking east, and I, I really, really enjoyed that storm, so it turned out to be a good day because I got up to the warm front, but if I didn't do that, I wouldn't have seen anything. So, I just wanted to talk about that day a little bit. Can I, can I move this yep. over now? Can yeah, you, that's fine. Can you move it for me? Got it. Thanks. Got you, Mel. <laughs> the sun is about to set, so it's pretty bright. And, um, yeah, so Brad, I, I, didn't know, I didn't tell you. Did I attack? I said you were driving for Silver Lane, right? Correct, yeah. Okay, yeah. Guiding. Okay, I <laughs> have to make sure I said Both. <laughs> so, Brad's a meteorologist and friend of mine, so we get to, we actually were chasing together on the Ashby Dalton tornado last year. It was a pretty awesome experience. Epic! Right epic! <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, it's fun because Brad works as a meteorologist, and so, you know, I know how to forecast, but not quite at the level. I don't have the experience like he does, so it'll be fun to talk about May 26th with Brad here so we can learn a couple lessons from this day. And I did, I've already learned something significant that may help me make different decisions next time because there have been days I've been on the warm front and saw good, it's good storms but no tornadoes and then the big tornadoes happened south on the dry line. But on this day, the dry line stayed capped and the tornadoes were on the warm front. And it's really, even though it's only like two hours away, it's hard to get to once the tornado already happens. You know, by the time you get to that storm, it might be, undercut or just done. Although the tornado warnings lasted for hours of <laughs> those storms, but the tornadoes, you know, kind of came and go until they died, the storm died. Um, so on, on Wednesday, 
it was one of these days where the cap was strong and that's like the lid on the atmosphere that's keeping storms from initiating. There's warmer temperatures up there and we need that cap to cool down enough or get enough lift to break that cap. And we call it, you know, a boom or bust day. Either that cap is gonna break and you get this incredible huge storm, possibly a huge tornado, or you get nothing. And so the cap broke up on the warm front, but on the dry line, it didn't. So reflecting back, we had all these parameters showing up on the mesoanalysis that were indicating it's gonna be a big day. If the cap breaks, it's gonna be a big day for big tornadoes in western Kansas. And what what could have you know been an indication that it wasn't gonna happen? Brad? <laughs> Yeah, early indications, early indications were that, okay, looking at the soundings that the day before, two days before, it looked, you know, pretty well capped. You had a very warm air layer at 750, 700 to about 850 millibars, right? Mm -hmm. And all the models did break out of these storms. Well, that's because it wasn't heating up the atmosphere enough, um, and it wasn't going to break that cap, which is actually what happened. And as, as we got closer the night before, we noticed the Texas Tex Wharf and some of the uh, convective convection allowing models like the H Triple R, uh, the HRF ARW. A lot of those models broke out big tank supercells on the dry line and had long track helicity streaks in the central Kansas that were ongoing for hours and hours even after dark. Um, that's the kind of setup as a chaser you can't pass up. You got to take the risk. Um, and that's what a lot of people, I'd say 90%, 90 some percent of the chasers, that's what we did. Um, it would have been very risky to play that warm front or the triple point and take a bet on that. That was more of the sure thing. You knew there were going to be storms. Mm -hmm. You knew there were probably going to be tornadoes up there. But you could get the, an absolute epic tornado, big tornado, that would go on for hours and hours and hours. And you could sit there, it'd be slow moving, moving at 10 to 15 miles per hour and uh, mostly out in the fields and mostly out in the field western kansas yeah. there's not Wide a lot open. of highly populated I mean, it areas could, could be a really a really <laughs> kind of special day but also violent day yeah uh, so that's what we were keeping an eye on as we got to the day of we went up to scott city like many people did um kind of in between areas we wanted to be in the middle of the dry line where you could get north if you wanted you could get south if you wanted to mm -hmm. and it was breaking out supercells but the models were all over the place mm -hmm. on which storm would actually break the cap. Uh, as we got through the day we noticed a high cirrus shield uh, overspreading the area um, which held down heating slightly. And so then, I want to talk yeah. about that for a minute um, as far as holding down the heating so um, yeah. basically we were waiting for temperatures to get warm enough to break the cap. Is that yeah. right? So when we had a cirrus shield, meaning a high, those high level cirrus clouds. I'm gonna go back to me. So there are high level cirrus clouds throughout the day in the warm sector, east of the dry line, south of the warm front. It wasn't a crystal blue, clear blue sky. Um, so that cirrus shield prevented the temperatures, surface temperatures to rise enough to apparently break the cap. Yep. So I did see one chaser post on Facebook that he actually was up on that northern target on the warm front where we had kind of initially targeted. And he saw one of the best tornadoes of the day up there on the warm front. And he said the reason he chose to target that instead of the dry line was because of the cirrus shield. Because he saw the cirrus were there and he thought, you know, I'm gonna go up to the warm front instead. It's more of a sure thing. And I honestly wasn't even thinking about that. So this is a good lesson for me. I'm gonna pay more attention to that next time when I have to choose between a dry line or a warm front. So do you think though that we could, we could have still had the cap break if, with the cirrus there? I think we would have broken the cap if that cirrus shield wasn't there. But what, you know, is this, what it's, is there, is there something that could have still made it happen even though the cirrus were present? Were present? We had a, I mean, we had a storm. We had an updraft go up west of Scout City. Yep, we, it was, was right where we thought it should be. It was beefy, it was robust, it had a nice base, broad mm -hmm. base, it was, it was strengthening. It even had a wall cloud on it. Yeah, it had it a was, wall cloud on it, and we thought, here we go, this is yeah, it. Yeah, I did cap, too. Right? 
for like many days this past week, uh, you notice the storm struggling. Mm -hmm. They'd go up and they'd pulse. They'd get strong, weaker, strong, weaker, strong, weaker, strong, and they would never right turn. They'd move like almost due north, northeast. Mm -hmm. And that's because that every updraft of that storm kept punching up into the cap, and the cap was like, oh, squeezing it, like, ah, you ain't gonna do this. And, uh, and that's what happened. It kept pulsing for hours. We mm -hmm. followed it up to Oak Oakley, like you did, Mel, mm -hmm. and into northern Kansas, and that um, it never could get going. Um, yeah. And that was because of the strength of that cap. But it really tried. And it goes to show what an extra one or two degrees of heating or an extra one or two degrees of dew point uh, mm -hmm. will do to help break the cap. So just um, a little extra buoyancy or lift instability. And that's all it needed. That's yeah. all it needed. Yeah. Man, what a sad <laughs> day. Yeah, yeah, but you know, it probably spared a lot of the people there uh, a really dangerous evening. Yeah. Uh, a violent evening. Because so. it was near the Greensburg area. That if that storm by Dodge City would have formed, it would have tracked right towards the Greenberg, Greensburg yeah. area, like some of the models were, were projecting. Right. right. Yeah. So, but that's the risk you take. That's chasing. <laughs> it's it was a tricky day. Yeah, it was really a tricky. Oh, oh sorry. Oh. All right. There she goes. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, and I, I think, you know, we haven't had a day that looked like that this year yet. It was, um, it was, it looked like it might be the big day of the year so far. And it's an end of May, you know, in Kansas. And people, chasers in particular, were pretty hyped up about it. So it was quite a letdown as far as the chase is concerned. Of course, you know, like Brad said, luckily no towns were destroyed. But, um, yeah, and I think, so next time, if I'm waiting around and, a lot of cirrus maybe i'll go north to that warm front a little earlier in the day <laughs> and play those storms instead i did manage to catch that one of the tornado worn storms one of the storms in southern nebraska that had produced a couple tornadoes already i got to it just as it died but the structure was pretty amazing right before i got there then i got on that other incredible lp supercell and there was nobody there because everybody had given up already no there might have been a couple people, but I was all alone on a dirt road and I just watched it come right over me and nobody's there. Not a single car drove by me. It was pretty incredible considering all the chasers out there. And the sun was going down, so it just made the lighting really beautiful for photography. And oh, so it was a really, and the lightning was incredible. Great evening for storms and structure after the letdown of the cap bust east of the dry line. Um, so I think that's a good lesson today. Right, Brad? Anything else you learned? For uh, you? <laughs> you know, I would say sometimes you just stick to your initial target. <laughs> <laughs> and, I know. You, and, yeah, honestly, sometimes it's, you win out. You, you, you win if you play the sure thing, the sure bet. Right, uh, and this day, the warm front was the sure bet. Yeah. Or do you take a risk and wait for a big, big show? Yeah. That's, that's... What sucks is like, what if you play that warm front and then that huge tornado happens down in Dodge City and like this huge long track tornado and everybody's there and you missed it. Like that's the hard part. It's like, you yeah. don't want to miss that. But it's not a sure thing. It never is. No. Well, what was really interesting, Texas Panhandle where they had sun all day, no cirrus shield, nothing. Mm -hmm. They heated up. Uh, to break the cap down there. That's there was right. actually a tornado down there. There was. I watched yeah. that storm down there in the panhandle and models actually kept, that. they were more consistent with showing that yeah. pop up actually. Yeah. And I had considered going there, but especially because we wanted to be kind of in the south for the next day. But yeah. there were a couple chasers down on in that Texas panhandle. I know some others were considering it, but they ended up in Scott City like a lot of us did. Like everybody else. So, but um, it turned out to be that supercell down there sat there in the same place in the panhandle for hours and was tornado warned for quite a while. It did produce a brief tornado. I saw pictures of it. It didn't, it didn't keep producing a tornado, but it kept sitting there spinning for a while. Um, yeah. So there you go. If those cirrus didn't come move in, why, why were, do you think there was cirrus shield? Uh, it was the, basically the, uh, 
was the upper level uh, energy that moved out into the plains with this entire system uh, that helped with the uh, you know the upward lift uh, just just the basically the trough the yeah, upper, the upper level, level trough, trough. Yeah, upper level winds carrying in that series yeah damn That's it it was that happens a <laughs> lot that happens a lot on uh, dry line bus days you get that sear shield that can mm-hmm. keep the temp down just slightly enough to not break it so that's yeah, certainly what happened yeah it is what it is we'll get it next time next time <laughs> next time we'll well will those sears to go away <laughs> all right well it was a fun week anyway and we still haven't seen a day yet this year that i would consider um you know, significant. I mean, there have been some tornadoes for sure and some great structure. It was a really good week for structure. I can't wait to work on the video because I got a lot of video that I just haven't had time to do much with quite yet. So that'll be fun. And um, still waiting for the big wedge tornado day this year. Of course, there were some out in Dixie Alley, but that's, you know, other than that, I want to see wind on the plains, in the fields maybe the northern plains because the southern plains, you know, things are going to start shifting north now, now that we're moving into June, and there's a ridge, right Brad? It there's is. A, a ridge. Ridge building in this building. week. Yeah, it's going to be a death ridge for storms. For the southern plains. For the southern plains, we'll have a northern stream wave move out late uh, by next weekend uh, with some pretty strong jet support, uh, strong westerlies. And that'll ignite some severe weather in the Dakotas and Minnesota as, er, as early as Friday, but especially as you get, it's only going to ramp up Saturday, Sunday into Monday and Tuesday of early next week. Um, so, so looking forward we'll to that. that goes. Yes. Northern Plains chasing. Here we come. End of this week into next weekend and early the following week. I'm excited because I prefer to be a little closer to home. It was pretty far this trip. All right, I'll be in touch everyone and I'll be working on some video this week from the trip. It was a lot of fun and some fun video too. All right, talk to you later.